Hi everyone. Now that we have understood how process groups, a session, and a pseudo terminal actually works on a Unix machine, the next important task will be to understand how Shim and Shim Daemon and the Run C application are used to actually uh, carry out the container creation process. So Shim and Run C actually follow the Open Connect Container Initiative, or rather, the Docker follows the Open Connect Container Initiative. So the way in which Docker has been divided has been designed and has been divided into multiple components is as per the OCI spec. And the Run C is nothing but an application as it's an independent executable, and that is available uh, along with Docker when you install Docker, and you can run it independent just like a Docker command line uh, executable. So, what Run C, as you know, does is you know there's a container manager called Container D. Container D imposes the constraints in the form of namespaces and control groups, and it gives the gives the control to shim which is nothing but a broker kind of stuff in between shim does nothing but it launches run c and run c based on the instruction given by the container d and the constraints it will create a new container process on a new root file system so that is what run c actually does so we will break this run c part into two so we'll first look at how or one one will design a, a a daemon process in C, and how one can will give give get a view of how one can actually build something like Run C, and the next process we'll look at you know we'll create a root file system based on a Docker image, and run 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 C independently on that uh, root file system. So. Uh, to start with, as I said here, no, we understood what PTY slave is, we understood what PTY master is. Now to start with, there's a shim process that gets started and it got, gets started as a leader. So you understand the term leader now because you know we discussed about it at length in the process groups and sessions uh, tutorial. And you also understand what a PTY slave is. So the, the shim starts, with, uh, starts as a control. Uh, as a leader with the controlling with the control having with the, having the control on the controlling terminal now once shim starts the next important thing that the shim does is it forks itself and creates something called shim daemon now along with this process of creating shim daemon shim relinquishes the control of the controlling terminal to the shim daemon so now henceforth what shim daemon does is it creates a new session it takes control of the terminal on which this particular application is running and it uh, also has the complete control over the standard input standard output and standard error handles right so this is what it does and the third process what it does is you know it launches run c so shim daemon forks itself it launches run c as an application and it also run c also runs within this particular context so shim daemon and Run C are in the same foreground process, and Run C has access to the PTY slave that we just discussed, which is nothing but the controlling terminal. And so PTY slaves, okay, yeah. So we discussed that. And next thing that Run C does is, you know, it launches the container application. So it takes the container application based on the instructions from the container D manager, container manager, and Run C execs that new container process on itself and exits and so since run c exits uh, without waiting for the container process to actually continue the shim daemon becomes its parent so shim daemon becomes the parent of the container process so this is how a uh, daemon ecosystem actually works now let's take a look at uh, let's do some coding exercise and see how it actually works So there's a code here with that I've written and you can see here this is very important so you need to use this x open source 
X open source uh, has defined to make it work. And as you can see here, there are two child pits. So in the previous example, as you can see here, uh, and as you will notice that there are two processes that are, that are getting created, right? The reason why that is done is when the first shim process relinquishes the control to the second one, even if you know the container D daemon which is attached to the shim dies, or even if the terminal gets killed, the the child daemon process and the and the the actual container process continue to execute. So you know, uh, when a, t a terminal connected to a process is closed, what happens is the terminal sends a sync signal hang up signal or a sick term signal to that and says that, you know, I I'm dying so you better, all the processes in this particular uh, foreground group also die. Uh, all, all the processes in this particular session also die. So that's, we. So we don't want that thing to happen because we want the container to execute uh, independent of everything and we want to be able to do a docker attach or docker exec to the container at a later point in time, right? So that is what the idea is. Now you can see here, I create a new child, I fork it and we don't need the master here. So, oh, sorry, this is, uh, so if it's the parent, what we do is we are ignoring the sig term and the sig hang up and we are waiting for the parent to get some inputs so this is essentially what is required right you know the shim process uh, is has given up has created a child pulsing the signal daemon uh, shim daemon and we we are waiting for the the container d to give shim more instructions or shim manager more instructions i'll rather call it shim manager now, in the first child, what, what we do is we set the session ID. We create a fresh session. So what it essentially does is now the, the parent process, which is the shim process that was running, uh, now that process, that shim process that was running is no more the leader of the session. And the new child, the daemon process that we started becomes the leader of the leader of the session. And then what we do, what do we do? We open the pseudo terminal. So we open the pseudo terminal associated with that terminal. So whichever terminal that we are executing this program in, we grab the master end of it. So we discussed about PTY master. So we grab the master end of it. Then we grant the permission to the slave. So you know, so this using the master, we get control of the slave terminal because you know you have to, we may have to write stuff to that or we, may, we might want to do more stuff with that terminal and we also unlock the that slave so we can print the slave name using that pts name command and we do a fork again so you know we, that's what we discussed so if we do a single fork there's a possibility that you know when we close the terminal the the child processes associated with it also gets killed but when we bifurcate this whole process with two forks even if the parent the parent most thing dies the child can continue executing and in the child again we create so that child takes over the control because that's the run c process which gets overlaid with the actual container so that's a container process so we open the the terminal we duplicate those those uh, standard input standard output and standard error for that and we wait for this application to accept inputs that I have put a while loop here just to show that you know this this process run, keeps running in the background even when we close the terminal and here you know you can to demonstrate how a container actually works or how to how to make a docker attach work we can write a small socket program to do that which I'm not doing right now because it's a simple program so you can write a small so socket program to accept the accept any fresh connections and we can also record the uh, the master slave this rather the slave name the terminal id associated with it and then send the output to that particular slave from the child so we can do all sorts of all sorts of things and if you are 
looking to know how this is actually done, you can send me an email, then I'll send you a program that demonstrates how this actually works. Now let's run this program and see uh, what happens under the hood. So, oops, there's a signal here. And I run that program so you can see that you know the parent is started, which is the shim. Then it starts the it gets access to slash dev slash pt2 because that's the terminal that we are currently in. And this whole thing is continuously running. Now let me list the process IDs. So let me go to a different window. I'll clear this out. PS AUX. And you can see here there are two processes 3980 and 3978 running here. And let me go and kill this particular terminal where we started this process. So I close this post process and I do a PSAX. And you can see that 3978 and 3980 still continue to run. So this essentially means that you know it's it's running as a daemon and it has not been stopped when we actually kill the terminal. Thank you for listening.